A great day to you, my dear student. I am Mrs. Rowena Olofernes, your physics teacher. I am here to guide you on the first module of our subject, General Physics 1, for the first semester, which specifically deals with measurements, uncertainties, and vectors. In this presentation, we will tackle topic 2 under measurements, which explains the concept of least count in different measuring tools. Do you know something about this topic? If not, no need for you to worry. I am here to teach you for you to fully understand this lesson. I will guide you all throughout, okay? Are you ready? Let's begin. We will start with a review. The lesson for review is about errors. Let's check if you can still remember. Question number one. What do you call the instrument shown below? Letter A. Ruler. B. Vernier caliper. C. Ammeter, or letter D. Cathetometer. You've got five seconds. Time is up. The right answer is letter B. Vernier caliper. Good job. So that is the name of the measuring tool shown on the screen. Let's proceed to question number two. These types of errors are due to systems being used to make the measurement. A. Systematic error. B. Random error. C. Absolute error. Or letter D. System error. You've got five seconds. Your time is up. The right answer is letter A. Systematic error. Excellent. You are correct. When we say systematic error, it's being caused by the measuring tool itself or the system itself. Third and last question. Readings with a small percentage of this type of error are precise. A. Systematic error. B. Random error. C. Absolute error. Or letter D. System error. You've got five seconds. Your time is up. The right answer here is letter B. Random error. Very good. When we say readings having a least or a small percentage of random error, we say that those readings are precise, but doesn't necessarily mean that those readings are accurate. So far, so good. That ends our review. Let's begin our lesson proper. Are you ready? Let's talk about least count. Do you know the meaning of least count? Well, least count is defined as the minimum value that can be measured accurately by an instrument. Or in other terms, it is the measurement or the difference between two markings in your measuring tools. Now, for you to fully understand what I'm saying, try to look at this, er this measuring tool. This is a ruler, right? Now, let's magnify this portion inside the red box. There you go. It shows from 0 to 1 millimeters of that ruler. When we say least count of this ruler, there are three steps for us to follow. Step number one, we need to identify two markings, two major markings. So since we ha are seeing a lot of lines, we need to consider the two major markings. That is here as the start and there as the end. So that means your zero is the start and one as your end. Second step, we will count the gap in between. Let's count together. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. There we go. That means we have ten small divisions in between our two markings. Do you understand? Were you able to follow? I repeat, we have two markings here, and these markings are the major markings of your measuring tool. So we have zero and one for your start and end. Second, we, com we count the gap in between or the small divisions in between. So you have your one to ten small divisions. Okay, good. The third one is we will now compute for the least count, making use of the information in our step one and two. Let's now compute. To compute, the numerator will be making use of the start and end. This time, we will get the difference. We will start 
we will be making use of the end value minus the start value. So here, 1 minus 0, that's end minus start. Din divided by, our denominator here would be 10. Where did we get 10? 10 here is from here. The small divisions in between your two markings. Do you understand? Good. So I repeat, your numerator is the difference between your end and start, and your denominator is the number of divisions in between your two markings. Good. Second. Second step is, what I mean is the second line is, you will now get the difference. So 1 minus 0 is 1 divided by 10. You will now consider the unit expressed in your measuring tool. In this example, it's stated here millimeters. So after getting the value of this, we will add the unit as millimeters. Now let's see. We have here the list count as 0 0.1 millimeters. Do you understand? Very good. So the final answer here is 0 0.1 millimeters. What does this value mean? This value means that your ruler, as an example, has the capability of measuring up to 0 0.1 millimeters. I mean, the least value it can accurate, accurately measure is 0 0.1 millimeters. Let's move on to our next example. But this time, this will be for practice. So you may get a paper and pen for you to compute for the least count. What is the least count of the instrument below? The instrument shown is a speedometer. You need to identify the start and the end. So there, your start is 40 and your end is 80. Are you following? Good. Now, by the way, in computing and calculating for the least count or stating the start and the end, you can always start any point of your measuring tool. Say, for example, in this measuring tool, I can start from 120 and end at 200. Or I can start from 160 and end at 200. Anywhere, as long as there is a major marking in your measuring tool. So in this example, let's focus our attention to this part of your speedometer. So our start is 40 and our end is 80. Do you get the point? Good. Now let's compute. Second is, we will now count the gaps in between our two markings. Let's count together. That's 1, 2, 3, and 4. So we have 4 small divisions in between 40 and 80. Do you understand? Now let's compute now the least count. For the least count, as mentioned in the previous slide, the numerator is the difference between your start and end. You will now begin with the value of end minus start. That gives you 80 minus 40 divided by 4. Where did we get 4? Correct. That's from the number of small divisions. So our least count now is 40 divided by 4. That's 80 minus 40 will give you 40 divided by the denominator 4. So the value of your least count is 10. Where did we get kilometers per hour? We simply copied the specified unit in your measuring tool. So there you go. The right answer is 10 kilometers per hour. Correct. Do we have the same answer? Very good. Let's now proceed to our two items for exercises. Let's have exercise number one. Let's try this. I know you can do this. What is the least count of the instrument below? That is the magnified version of that part of your graduated cylinder. I'll give you one minute. Your one minute starts now. Halfway there. Do not forget the steps. First is you identify the two markings. Second, you count the gaps in between. Are you almost done? Okay. Let's now check your answer. 
This is a graduated cylinder, and we are going to compute for the least count of this measuring tool. Least count is equal to 100 minus 50, because in this case, our start is 50 and our n is 100. Divided by the small divisions in between, that's you need to be careful in counting because there are small and there are shorter and longer lines, but still the same. It's still part of the small divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Therefore, your denominator is 10. Least count is 50 over 10. So the value is 5. For the ml, we copied here. That's milliliter. So we, that is our final answer. 5 ml for the least count, which means that this graduated cylinder can accurately measure every 5 ml. Very good. So that is the final answer. Keep it up. Let's proceed to the second item. What is the least count of the instrument below? This time, it's a thermometer. We have there the magnified version of that part of your thermometer. Your timer starts now. Identify the two markings. Done. This time, count the number of divisions. Count carefully. Are you done? Use those values and compute for the least count. Wow, that's less than a minute. Let's reveal the answer. Let's check if we have the same answer. This is a thermometer. The least count of this thermometer would give you 30 minus 20 because your start is 20 and your end is 30. There. Denominator is 10. That is the number of small divisions in between 20 and 30. Next is, we will now simplify the equation. Therefore, we have 30 minus 20. The difference is 10 divided by, copy the denominator, 10. So the least count is 1 degrees Celsius, as stated right here in your measuring tool. So the least count is 1 degree Celsius, meaning this thermometer has the capability of measuring accurately every 1 degree Celsius. Very good. That's fantastic. We are done with our two exercises. How is it? It was easy average or difficult now if you have difficulty in answering those two exercises you can always go back to this video and replay until you reach the time that you already understood the topic so these are the references try to have a look and that's it you've completed our lesson for today about least count of the different measuring tools. Good job and congratulations. See you in the next lesson.